3. Totally Enclosed Lifeboat IMO Requirements for Totally Enclosed Lifeboats on Ships Built After 1 July 1986 1. Totally Enclosed Lifeboats shall be comply with the IMO requirements for all lifeboats and in addition shall comply with the following. 2. Enclosure The enclosure shall be so arranged that a. It protects the occupants against heat and cold. b. Access to the lifeboat is provided by hatches that can be closed to make the lifeboat watertight. c. Hatches are positioned so as to allow launching and recovery operations to be performed without any occupant having to leave the enclosure. D. Access hatches are capable of being opened and closed from both inside and outside and are equipped with means to hold them in securely open positions. E. It is possible to rope the lifeboat. F. It is capable, when the lifeboat is in the capsized position with the hatches closed and without significant leakage, of supporting the entire mass of the lifeboat, including all equipment, machinery and its full complement of persons. G. It includes windows or translucent panels on both sides and to admit sufficient daylight to the inside of the lifeboat with the hatches sealed so as to make artificial light unnecessary. Its exterior is of highly visible color and its interior of a color, which does not cause discomfort to the occupants. I. Handrails provide a secure handhold for persons moving about the exterior of the lifeboat, and A. Embarkation and Disembarkation. J. Persons have access to their seats from an entrance without having to climb over thwarts or other obstructions. K. The occupants are protected from the effects of dangerous subatmospheric pressures, which might be created by the lifeboat engine. 3. Capsizing and rewriting. A. A safety belt shall be fitted at each indicated seating position. The safety belt shall be designed to hold a person of a mass of 100 kilograms. 200 dives, securely in place when the lifeboat is in a capsized position. b. The stability of the lifeboat shall be such that it is inherently or automatically self-riding when loaded with its full or partial complement of persons and equipment and all entrances and openings are closed watertight and the persons are secured with safety belts. c. The lifeboat shall be capable of supporting its full complement of persons and equipment when the lifeboat is in the damaged condition of being holed in any one location below the water line, assuming no loss of buoyancy material and no other damage and its stability shall be such that in the event of capsizing, it will automatically attain a position that will provide an above water escape for its occupants. d. The design of all engine exhaust pipes air ducts and other openings shall be such that water is excluded from the engine when the lifeboat capsizes and rewrite. 4. Propulsion Same regulation as the partially enclosed lifeboat. 4. Freefall lifeboats A lifeboat arranged for freefall launching shall be so that it is capable of rendering protection against harmful accelerations resulting from being launched when loaded with its full complement PF persons and equipment from at least the maximum height at which it is designed to be stowed above the water line with the ship in its lightest seagoing condition, under unfavorable conditions of up to 10 degrees of trim and with the ship listed not less than 20 degrees either way. General agreement for a freefall lifeboat, 1. Socket for charging battery, 2. Searchlight, 3. Holder for antenna, 4. Manual pump. 5. Equipment, 6. Hydraulic jack with release bolt, 7. Emergency tiller, 8. Battery, 9. Spring starter, 10. Stern tube greasing, 11. Stilling box, 12. Emergency stop, 13. Shut off valve sprinkler pump, 14. Coupling sprinkler pump, 15. Battery charger, 16. Engine control lever, 17. Hydraulic pump for release bolt, 18. Air pressure gauge, 19. Valve for compressed air, 20. Switchboard, 21. Wash line sprinkler connection, 22. Holder for emergency transmitter, 23. Socket for emergency transmitter, 24. Earthing for transmitter, 25. Two filled tank fuel, 26. Drain caulk. 
27. Fuel valve, 28. Charging valve for air bottles, 29. Air bottles, 30. Hook to lash, 31. Compressed air exit, 32. Drinking water and equipment, 33. Ventilator lockable. Free fall lifeboat. Lifeboats with a self-contained air support system. In addition to the foregoing requirements a lifeboat with the self-contained air support system shall be so arranged that when proceeding with all entrances and opening closed, the air in the lifeboat remains safe and breathable and the engine runs normally for a period of not less than 10 minutes. During this period, the atmospheric pressure inside the lifeboat shall never fall below the outside atmospheric pressure nor shall it exceed it by more than 20 MB. The system shall have visual indicators to indicate the pressure of the air supply at all times. Fire Protected Lifeboats 1. In addition to complying with the above requirements, a fire protected lifeboat when waterborne shall be capable of protecting the number of persons it is permitted to accommodate when subjected to a continuous soil fire that envelops the lifeboats for a period of not less than 8 minutes. 2. Water Spray System A lifeboat which has a water spray, fire protection system shall comply with the following. A. Water for the system shall be drawn from the sea by a self-priming motor pump. It shall be possible to turn on and turn off the flow of water over the exterior of the lifeboat. B. The sea water intake shall be so arranged as to prevent the intake of flammable liquids from the sea surface. C. The system shall be arranged for flushing with fresh water and allowing complete drainage. A watercraft totally enclosed GRP lifeboat has been tested under the most rigorous conditions in the presence of IMO and many others. The results of the tests showed that the temperature inside the craft did not exceed a maximum of 54 degrees C, 130 degrees Fahrenheit, reducing to 42.8 degrees Celsius, 109 degrees Fahrenheit amidship at head level. The watercraft SAT survival system enables the crew to evacuate and to be afloat totally enclosed and independent of the outside atmosphere. The craft is fully protected by means of a water spray system, which enables it to go through an oil fire up to a distance of one mile. The craft is extremely maneuverable with a speed of over six knots and is fueled for at least 24 hours operation. Embarkation of the craft is through two large watertight openings which permit all persons to be seated, with doors closed ready for lowering in less than 60 seconds, during which time the engine can be hydraulically started for immediate getaway. Immediate lowering is affected by pulling and maintaining tension on the control wire, which passes through the canopy top adjacent to the control position, from which the craft is driven and the engine controlled. The craft descends at a controlled speed and being suspended from two points, will not spin. The descent can be halted at any point by releasing the control wire. The boat release system is operated by a single lever, which releases both hooks simultaneously when the craft is waterborne. The craft is constructed of glass fiber reinforced plastic with fire retardant additives and pigmented international orange. It is totally enclosed with two large inward opening access doors that are hinged to permit the lower half to be clipped into the top half for ventilation. The doors will also hinge and stow under the roof. A large armor-plated glass escape hatch is fitted at each end of the cover and this will allow access to the lifting hooks, if necessary. A similar hatch is fitted on top of the cover, immediately above the helmsman's position, which permits him to obtain maximum vision when standing. An automatic opening and closing ventilator is also provided, on top of the cover. A compressed air system is incorporated that operates a continuous watershed for 10 minutes, with an air supply sufficient for the personnel as well as the engine running in full throttle. A positive pressure is built up inside the craft preventing the entry of fumes and gases. Air is not recirculated. Seat belts are provided and the ventilators close automatically in the event of the craft capsizing. The diesel engine is completely enclosed in a glass fiber casing with the hinged lid and can be restarted immediately after riding, if the craft should capsize. Cooling is by means of a completely enclosed fresh water system. The exhaust system is fitted with a non-return clack valve to ensure that water does not enter the engine. 
The rowing of totally enclosed lifeboats is a somewhat difficult operation, due to the fact that the oarsman is unable to see the blades of their oars in most cases. In the smaller enclosed lifeboats, paddles are sometimes substituted for oars due to the difficulty of handling oars in the confined space. Alternative to free fall The watercraft PROD, Preferred Orientation and Displacement, system considerably reduces the risk of a lifeboat launched from a platform or rig form colliding with it and sustaining damage. Until a lifeboat's propeller begins to bite into the water to give the boat steerage way, the lifeboat is at the mercy of wind and wave and is therefore most vulnerable and can easily be blown or washed back into the structure. The PRD system overcomes this by pulling the boat directly away from the rig. By the time the PRD system releases, the boat's engine has come up to speed and the boat can then proceed to safety under its own power. This is achieved without the need for survivors to overcome any reservations they might have about evacuating by means of a free fall boat. Simply explained, the PRD system comprises a long flexible pole attached to the offshore installation at its inboard end by means of a hydraulic hinge. The outboard end of the pole is attached to the forward end of the lifeboat by means of tag line incorporating an automatic release coupling. As the lifeboat is lowered on its falls, the tension in the tag line causes the pole to be pulled down, thus storing energy in the hydraulic hinge. As the boat continues to lower, this tension also begins to pull its bow away from the installation. When the boat is in the water, the falls are released and the load on the tag line is reduced. The energy stored in the hydraulic hinge overcomes this reduced load and causes the pole to rise back to its original position. As it does so, it pulls the lifeboat away from the rig until the boat is directly beneath the outboard end of the pole when the tag line is released automatically. The lifeboat's speed at release is about its normal speed and by this time, its own propulsion system should carry it out of danger. Rescue boats on ships built after 1st of July 1986. 1. General requirements. A. Except as provided by this regulation, all rescue boats shall comply with the requirements for all lifeboats, except that they shall not be required to be provided with watertight lockers or compartments for the storage of small items of equipment or means for the storage of rainwater a permanently attached earth connection and antenna securing requirements, a manually controlled lamp attached to the top of the cover or enclosure, a source of light inside the boat, the equipment as listed, or be marked with the required lifeboat markings. Unless the rescue boat is also a lifeboat. b. Rescue boats may be of either right or inflated construction or a combination of both and shall. i. Be not less than 3.8 meters. 13 feet, and not more than 8.5 meters, 27.9 feet, in length. 2. Be capable of carrying at least 5 seated persons and a person lying down. C. Rescue boats, which are a combination of rigid and inflated construction, shall comply with the appropriate requirements of this regulation to the satisfaction of the administration. D. Unless the rescue boat has adequate shear. It shall be provided with a bow cover extending for not less than 15% of its length. E. Rescue boats shall be capable of maneuvering at speed up to 6 knots and maintaining that speed for a period of at least 4 hours. F. Rescue boats shall have sufficient mobility and maneuverability in a seaway to enable persons to be retrieved from the water, martial life rafts and tow the largest life raft carried on the ship when loaded with its full complement of persons and equipment or its equivalent at the speed of at least two knots. G. A rescue boat shall be fitted with an inboard engine or outboard motor. If it is fitted with an outboard motor, the rudder and tiller may form part of the engine. Notwithstanding the general requirements for all lifeboats, petrol-driven outboard engines with an approved fuel system may be fitted in rescue boats provided the fuel tanks are especially protected against fire and explosion. H. Arrangements for towing shall be permanently fitted in rescue boats and shall be sufficiently strong to marshal or tow life rafts as required by subparagraph F. Above. I. Rescue boats shall be fitted with wet or tight stowage for small items of equipment. Hook. Rescue boat equipment. A. 
all items of rescue boat equipment, with the exception of boat hooks which shall be kept free for fending off purposes, shall be secured within the rescue boat by lashings, storage in lockers or compartments, storage in brackets or similar mounting arrangements, or other suitable means. The equipment shall be secured in such a manner so as not to interfere with any launching or recovery procedures. All items of rescue boat equipment shall be as small and of as little mass as possible and shall be packed in suitable and compact form. b. The normal equipment of every rescue boat shall consist of 1. Sufficient buoy and towers or paddles to make headway in calm seas. Thaw pins, crutches or equivalent arrangements shall be provided for each orb. Thaw pins or crutches shall be attached to the boat by lanyards or chains. 2. A buoy and baler. 3. A binnacle containing an efficient compass which is luminous or provided with a suitable means of illumination. 4. A sea anchor and tripping line with a hawser of adequate strength not less than 10 meters, 32.5 feet, in length. 5. A painter of sufficient length and strength attached to the release device and placed in the forward end of the rescue boat. 6. One buoyant line, not less than 50 m, 164 feet, in length, of sufficient strength to tow a lifer aft as required by subparagraph 1, F, above. 7. One waterproof electric torch suitable for more signaling together with one set of spare batteries and one spare bulb in a waterproof container. 8. One whistle or equivalent sound signal. 9. A first aid outfit in a waterproof case capable of being closed tightly after use. 10. Two buoy and rescue quits, attached to not less than 30 meters, 97.5 feet, of buoyant line. 11. A searchlight capable of effectively illuminating a light-colored object at night having a width of 18 meters, 58.5 feet, at a distance of 180 meters, 585 feet, for a total period of 16 hours and of working for at least 3 hours continuously. 12. An efficient radar reflector. 13. Thermal protective aid sufficient for 10% of the number of persons the rescue boat is permitted to accommodate or two, whichever is the greater. C. In addition to the equipment required by subparagraph 2, B. Above, the normal equipment of every rigid rescue boat shall include, 1. A boat hook, 2. A bucket, 3. A knife or hatchet. D. In addition to the equipment required by subparagraph 2, B. Above. The normal equipment of every inflated rescue boat shall consist of 1. A buoy and safety knife, 2. Two sponges, 3. An efficient manually operated bellows or pump, 4. A repair kit in a suitable container for repairing punctures, 5. A safety boat. Additional requirements for inflated rescue boats. A. Notwithstanding the requirements for all lifeboats, Inflated rescue boats shall not be required to be fire retarding or non-combustible or to be of sufficient strength to withstand a load without residual deflection on removal of the load. b. An inflated rescue boat shall be constructed in such a way that when suspended by its bridle or lifting hook. t. 1. It is sufficient strength and rigidity to enable it to be lowered and recovered with its full complement of persons and equipment. 2. It is of sufficient strength to withstand a load of four times the mass of its full complement of persons and equipment at an ambient temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degree def, plus or minus 3 degrees, 6 degrees Fahrenheit, with all relief valves inoperative. 3. It is of sufficient strength to withstand a load of 1.1 times the mass of its full complement of persons and equipment at an ambient temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius, minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, with all relief valves operative. 4. C. Inflated rescue boats shall be so constructed as to be capable of withstanding exposure. 1. When stowed on an open deck on a ship at sea. 2. For 30 days afloat in all sea conditions. D. In addition to carrying the marking required to be marked on all lifeboats, Inflated rescue boats shall be marked with a serial number, the maker's name or trademark and the date of manufacture.
e. the buoyancy of an inflated rescue boat shall be provided by either a single tube subdivided into at least five separate compartments of approximately equal volume or two separate tubes neither exceeding 60% of the total volume. The buoyancy tubes shall be so arranged that in the event of any one of the compartments being damaged, the intact compartments shall be able to support the number of persons which the rescue boat is permitted to accommodate, each having a mass of 75 kilograms, 165 pounds, when seated in their normal positions with positive freeboard over the rescue boat's entire periphery. F. The buoyancy tubes forming the boundary of the inflated rescue boat shall, on inflation, provide a volume of not less than 0.17 cubic meters for each person the rescue boat is permitted to accommodate. G. Each buoyancy compartment shall be fitted with a non-return valve for manual inflation and means for deflation. A safety relief valve shall also be fitted unless the administration is satisfied that such an appliance is unnecessary. H. Underneath the bottom and on vulnerable places on the outside of the inflated rescue boat, rubbing strips shall be provided to the satisfaction of the administration. I. Where the transom is fitted, it shall not be inset by more than 20% of the overall length of the rescue boat. J. Suitable patches shall be provided for securing the painters fore and aft and the becketed lifelines inside and outside the boat. K. The inflated rescue boat shall be maintained at all times in a fully inflated condition. Osborne Fast Semi-Rigid Rescue Boat, Chapter 7 Lifeboat Launching, Devices Slash Appliances, Davits. Davits are large cranes which hold the lifeboat in position on the ship and lower the lifeboat into the water. They are also used to swing the boat to the lowering position and then after it has been hoisted, to swing it back on board. There are different types of davits used in lifeboats launching and handling. 1. Gravity davits. These of davits are must for the use of lifeboats weighing more than 2.25 tons. They consist of two arms mounted on rollers which travel down inclined tracks which allow the boat to be safely lowered even if the ship is listed 25 degrees either way. The falls are multi-strand steel wire rope led to and stowed on the drum of the boat winch which is so arranged that the two falls are kept separate and are paid out at the same rate. The winch has an automatic brake which controls our speed of lowering between 18 and 36 meters per minute. Gravity Davit, Crane Type, 2. The Miranda System, Miranda Davits employ a different approach to the launching of a boat by means of gravity. The boat is contained in and attached to a cradle that is hoisted to the davit head by means of two single wire rope falls, there are therefore no floating blocks. The boat is attached to the cradle by means of two short wire straps placed between the cradle head and the boat's lifting hooks. The painter which is attached to the lifeboat by means of a quick release system is also attached to the cradle and not the ship, Miranda Davits, showing cradle and lifeboat attachment to cradle. The control wire, which lifts the brake, is attached to the spindle on the davits and unwinds as the boat lowered. When the boat leaves the ship, the end of the control wire is withdrawn from the boat. 3. Luffing Davits Luffing Davits, obsolete on vessels built after 1st of July 1986, require the boat to be taken from inboard to outboard by the manual turning of a worm screw or telescopic screw. These davits are required to be capable of launching a boat against an adverse list of 15 degrees and like gravity davits, are fitted in pairs. The boat normally rests in chocks at deck level and is firmly held down by means of deck gripes. Normally wire rope falls and winches are fitted but under certain circumstances manila ropes may be used. Manila rope falls attached to lifeboats 24 feet 7 .3 meters, in length and over are required to be rove in a three-fold purchase, the hauling and standing parts of the fall being roved through the center sheaves, in order to balance the weight. Suitable bollards for making fast shall be provided. The wall and crescent luffing davit. A compact mechanical davit which can be situated wet within the length of the boat being handled. This inexpensive type of luffing davit is in use in many vessels. It is simple to operate, easy to maintain and neat in appearance. Can be used with mania fats or wire falls and winches. 4. 
single ARM davits. Single arm davits are mechanically controlled and are required to be fitted with wire falls and a winch. They may be sighted on the stem of small vessels attached to a lifeboat, class C boat, inflatable boat or a rescue boat. Rigid boats will be secured in chocks and griped down to the deck. Inflated boats will be secured at an approved position by approved position by approved fastenings. Single armed davits attached to boats are normally required to be able to launch the boat on one side of the ship only and are not required to launch the boat against an adverse list. Two men only are to be in the boat while it is being launched. Survivors join the boat when it is afloat. Single arm davits may also be placed amidships for the launching and recovery of inflatable boats and for the launching of life rafts. When intended for use with life rafts, the fall is required to have a tricing line attached for the purpose of recovering the hook after a life raft has been launched, without tuning the davit inboard. They shall also be fitted with the safety hook, which when the safety catch is released, will automatically release the life raft as soon as it is waterborne. In lieu of a winch, some single arm davits intended for launching life rafts will be fitted with the spring motor for automatic recovery of the fall. Single armed davits intended for use with life rafts shall be capable of launching the life raft when the ship is listed 20 degrees with her way on vessels constructed after 1 July 1986, or 15 degrees on other vessels. Hanging from the davits are falls, ropes and blocks, which are fastened to rotten releasing hooks. Releasing gear is installed in the lifeboats to let go the falls. Without such gear, letting go the falls in a seaway could be a difficult and dangerous job. The widely used Rotmer gear releases the falls of both ends of the boat at the same time. The man in charge orders the boat to be released. A lever is turned and this lever rotates, shifting connection through universal joints to hook locks at both bow and stem ends of the boat. When the hook locks are opened, the hook releases the falls. Each Rotmer releasing hook is fitted with a preventive bar. These bars keeps the fall from accidentally detaching in case the falls slacken when the boat is in the water. The Rotmer releasing gear is located in the bottom of the lifeboat and extends from bow to stern. It is a pipe with a universal coupling on each end a lever bolted near the middle. When this lever is turned 180 degrees, both releasing hooks open at the same time. Safety Notes on Releasing Gear Since the releasing gear actually launches the lifeboat into the water, either intentionally or unintentionally, certain safety precautions must be observed. Regulations Require 1. The area around the releasing gear form the keel to the side benches shall be painted white. 2. This band of white should be approximately 12 inches wide depending on the internal arrangement of the lifeboat. 3. The lever shall be painted red and marked Danger Lever Drops Boat. Tricing Pendants Tricing Pendants, also called tricing lines, are wires which bring the boat to the side of the ship. They hold the boat in position at the embarkation deck until the frapping lines are passed around the falls. The tricing pendants are then released. Raising the brake lever again permits the boat to continue down until it reaches the water. The Tricing Pendant Tricing Lines A device for reeling on or laying out a line as handbrakes gives control for lowering speed. Motor or hand power can be used for hoisting. Winch hand cranks have coupling which automatically disengages the cranks of the metric motor to turn the winch. In order to reduce possibility of injury, the emergency disconnect switch should always be in off position when hand cranking. Lubrication requirements should always be followed to prevent accumulation of moisture. Falls Ropes or lines used in hoisting and lowering the lifeboat when launching and hoisting. When floating blocks are fitted to emergency lifeboats, provision must be made to prevent the falls from cabling. A fall cable when it twists round and round. This was prevalent with manila rope falls, but was considerably reduced with the introduction of square laid rope. It may occur on no occasion with wire rope falls, and happens when the weight of boat is taken off the falls. One means of preventing this is to secure a length of light wire between the inboard cheeks of the two floating blocks. Another is to have a swivel on the bottom of each of the floating blocks. Where swivels are employed, 
They are to be kept well-oiled to prevent them from seizing up and so becoming useless. Limit switch and emergency disconnect switch. The limit switch will stop the davits arm 12 inches before they reach the stowed on position, then the davits should be hand cranked to their final position. If for some reason it is necessary to stop raising the lifeboat, the winch also has an emergency disconnect switch to stop the flow of power to the motor and this switch should always be in off position. Note, shipmasters must inspect limit switches every three months. Gripes. The function of the gripes is to hold the boat firmly down in the chocks, or in the case of gravity davits, firmly against the shoulder chocks on the davits. Gripes are required to be so fitted that they can be let go from inboard. The normal method of fitting is to have the gripe wires taken over fair leads on the gunnel and fastened on the outboard side to the deck or davit frame. A sinhole slip is attached to the inboard end of the gripes for letting go. A strong rope lashing is incorporated next to the sinhole slip to allow it to be cut in an emergency. Care must be taken as the boat is turned out, that the thimble on the inboard end of the gripes, which has to pass over the boat, does not foul up anything. It is the responsibility of the two men in the boat to clear the gripes if necessary, and on gravity davits, it is the responsibility of the men who let go the gripes to ensure that when a trigger is fitted, it does in fact fall. Latch-on gripes are an alternative method sometimes used with gravity davits. Latch-on gripes instead of going over the boat are let over stout bobbins on the stern and stern posts. All that is necessary is to let go the sinhole slips and then throw the gripe wires off the bobbins. Skates. Skates are fitted to lifeboats so that they can be launched when the vessel has an adverse list. When the ship has been abandoned and the lifeboat is clear, the skates can be dropped overboard. Every lifeboat, except the emergency lifeboats on passenger ships, is fitted with two skates on the inboard side for the purpose of assisting the passage of the boat down the side of a ship with an adverse list. That is to say, the skates are there to act as skids and help you slide or skate the boat down the side of the ship. When the boat is in the water, the skates cease to have any value, and will greatly hamper the movement of the boat. Therefore, as soon as it may be convenient, unship them, and either stow them in the boat, or tow them, normally there is sufficient wood in the skates to keep them afloat. If the ship is abandoned prematurely, and the survivors return to it, the lifeboats must be recovered and the skates replaced, so that they are once again ready for use. Only when the ship actually sinks should the skates be discarded. Boarding, launching and recovery of lifeboats launching instructions with the use of gravity davit. 1. Remove boat cover and its supporting ridge pole. Put cap on drain, lead sea painter forward, make fast outboard and clear all obstruction. 2. Release grips. 3. Raise winch roll to the outboard position and lower away to embarkation deck. The tricing lines will bring the boat to the side of the ship. The brakes should be put on the tricing line to take all the weight. 4. Before passengers and crew enter the boat at the embarkation deck, frap inclines should be passed and held taut. When all aboard the boat are seated, the hooks on tricing lines should be released and the boat eased outboard by slacking frapping lines. Releasing the tricing wires without observing these precautions will cause the boat to swing out violently. 5. With the boat in the outboard position, it may be lowered into the water and released. The remaining sequence is similar to that for boats launched by mechanical davits. Instructions for hoisting and lowering a lifeboat, to hoist lifeboat by air motor. 1. Connect the air motor with the boat winch at its motor support by way of the butterfly nut. 2. Open the air stop valve. 3. Pull down the air motor lever to the other side of the instruction plate TC start air motor. Lifeboat will be hoisted. 4. Return the air motor lever to the natural position, and close air stop valve. 5. Disconnect the motor indispensably with the winch at its motor support to prepare boat for lowering. Recovery of free fall lifeboat. 2. Hoist and stow lifeboat by manual handling. 1. Connect the manual handle cranks with the winch at the free ends of its motor shaft and its brake shaft, and turn them around to the other side of nameplate to hoist lifeboat. To lower lifeboat. 1. 
pull up the handle brake lever, and the boat will be lowered by gravity at the speed controlled by the action of governing brake. Note. When required to lower the boat at the low speed, the hand brake lever must be placed in half position. During the lowering operation of boat, confirm that the rotor and the manual handle cranks are disconnected completely with the motor shaft. This video will focus on various aspects relating to the release gear systems and recovery procedures for free fall lifeboats. Free fall lifeboats offer various advantages over the conventional davit launched lifeboats by way of easy launching in adverse conditions. Any lapse in correct procedures can lead to serious casualty and damage to the lifeboats. The crew need to ensure the Beckett line running around the boat is secured so that it does not foul on the davit when the boat is sliding down. The release lever will be repeatedly operated as a pumping action, which in turn operates the hydraulic plunger. The emergency release valve will be turned clockwise using the small lever for free fall launching. There is an increasing number of ships of all types and sizes being with free fall lifeboats. This type of survival craft offers a number of advantages over the traditional two fall system for both the ship operators and the ship crew. From the point of view of the operator, the 1983A amendments to Chapter 3 of Solace 1974, Section 3, gave the option of providing one or more lifeboats capable of being free fall launched over the stern and of such aggregate capacity as will accommodate the total number of persons on board, on each side of the vessel. With the modern ship capable of being operated with fewer crew members than ships of similar size a few years ago, all on board can be accommodated in one lifeboat, whether it is davit launched or free fall. However in accordance with the rules and with traditional launching arrangements, two boats, two sets of davits, two sets of emergency rations, etc., have to be provided and, of course, this also means that any inspection and servicing requirements have to be done twice once for each boat. The free fall alternative means that all this duplication is eliminated as only one boat need to be provided at the stem. From the point of view of the personnel, the free fall lifeboat has the advantage that when it is launched, its forward momentum carried it away from the ship, or offshore installation, by which time its propeller will be effective thus greatly reducing the chances of it being washed back by wind and waves and hurled against the ship or structure. Types of Davit System for Freefall Lifeboats The Roller Track System It has its Davit arms carried on rollers operating on a track beneath the launching ramp. When launching boat under controlled conditions, the rate of descent is controlled by centrifugal brakes on the winch to give a lowering rate of 15-18 per minute. When the davit arms assembly has reached the outboard end of the track, the roller continues to follow the curve thus swinging the lifeboat further outboard. Most of the installations sold to date are of this type because of the requirements of some authorities to launch a boat by means of a davit without the need of a power supply from the ship. Unlike in an A-frame type where a separate stored power unit must be installed. The A-frame system. This has its davit arms piloted at the lower outboard end of the launching ramp. A plate at the top and acting as boarding platform gives access to the lifeboat door. In a controlled launching of the lifeboat, hydraulic arms near the pivot point swing the davit arm assembly upwards and over the center to its fully extended position so that the lifeboat is well clear of the vessel's stern. Free fall embarkation procedure. All personnel proceed to boat station. Warm clothing to be worn. Life jackets to be carried but not put on. Note, do not put on life jacket before the lifeboat is afloat. Failure to observe this procedure may lead to injury during the launching. 1. Disengage the boat lashings 2. Disconnect the battery charger 3. Board the free fail lifeboat, does not apply to boat equipped with solar generator. 1. Switch on main power, main switch. Must all times be switched on to make sure that the battery will be charged by the solar generator, or by the battery charger from the ship. 2. Switch on ignition, engine fuse. 3. 
with gear lever in neutral, press red button and move lever into a head start position. 4. Press the start button. 5. Bring the gear lever back into the neutral position, the red gear button springs back automatically. Note, speed and gear control level, with the red gear button pressed in, the lever controls only the engine speed. With the button in the out position, the lever first operated the gear away from the neutral position, then engine speed is increased. Free fall launching clothes all hatches and vents. Fasten seat belts. 1. Pull the valve lever aft to position A. 2. Operate the hydraulic pump. After about 20 strokes, the locking device will disengage and the boat is now free. Caution. Before replacing the boat and the launching ramp, the hydraulic piston should be brought back into its housed position by 1. Putting the valve lever in position B. 2. Operating the hydraulic pump until a marked pressure buildup is noted. Emergency release. Operate only when release system is damaged. Pull valve lever. Pause. 1. Aft. Position A. Pull three-way cock. Pause. Dot 4. In left direction. Position C. Operate emergency release pump. Pause. Dot 3. After about 30 stroke locking device will disengage and the boat is free. Caution. Before replacing the boat and the launching ramp, the hydraulic piston should be brought back into its housed position by 1. Putting the valve lever, pause dot 1, forward, position B, 2. Opening valve screw, pause. 5, of emergency release pump, pause dot 3, 3. Operating the hydraulic pump, pause. 2, until mark valved screw, pause dot 5, of emergency release pump. Pause. 3. 4. Putting three-way cock. Pause. 4. And right direction upwards. Methods of maintaining, operating and starting. Lifeboat engine. Maintenance of engine and accessories. Insert drawing, photo of lifeboat engine with instruction for starting, operation and routine maintenance. Crankcase. Remove the oil cap and fill with lube oil up to the upper marking on the dipstick. When checking the oil level, insert the dipstick completely. Clutch case, the capacity of fuel oil as follows. Model capacity. SV8A, 2.8 liters. SV10A, 3.5 liters. Remove the oil cap and fill with lube oil up to the upper marking on the dipstick. When checking the oil level, do not screw the lube oil dipstick on. Checking the oil level. Do not screw the lube oil dipstick on. Lubrication of each part Lubricate the starting chain and the starting bearing with lube oil before operation. Preparation before engine starting. In order to keep the engine in top running condition, carry out a regular maintenance check. In this way, small malfunctions can be detected and corrected before they lead to a serious engine failure. 1. Check the lube oil level periodically both crankcase and clutch case. 2. Check the fuel oil level and refill periodically. 3. Fuel is not rejected if air is present anywhere in this system. Unless the fuel tank becomes empty or the parts are dismantled, it should not be necessary to repeat the air venting procedure. Air venting. Turn the starting handle up to air if vented from the fuel line according to the following sequences. 1. Loosen the plug of the fuel strainer, and when bubble-free fuel comes out, securely tighten the plug. 2. Loosen the nipples at each end of the fuel injection pipe. Set the speed control level to high. 3. Loosen the delivery valve holder, by about 2 turns, and when bubble-free fuel comes out, securely tighten the delivery valve holder, and then, after attaching the injection pipe, securely tighten the fuel pump side nipple. Now turn the engine with the starting handle about 30 times. Fuel oil is circulated and comes out from the nipple on the injection valve side. When there is no more air bubble present in the oil, tighten the nipple. This indicates that the air has been completely vented. Attention, start the engine every 10 days in order to check the engine condition or turn the starting handle by hand in order to lubricate each part and also turn the starting handle until you hear the sound of fuel being injected. 1. 
raise the decompression lever and turn the starting handle vigorously 5 to 6 times until the flywheel gains momentum. 2. Release the decompression lever while turning the starting handle 2 or 3 times. 3. If the engine is running normally, engage low speed with the clutch and then gradually increase speed. Usual operation of lifeboat engine, before operation 1. Check the fuel oil level in the tank. Reef the lift necessary. 2. Open the fuel cock. 3. Check the lube oil level in the crankcase and clutch case. Refill up to the upper marking on the dipstick. Turn the handle of the lube oil filter on the outlet side several times to the left or right. 5. Open the Kingston cock. 6. Turn the starting handle by hand in order to lubricate each part. 7. Set the speed control lever to high. 8. Turn the starting handle until you hear the sound of fuel being injected. Note, fuel will not be injected if air is present anywhere in this system when fuel runs out and when the fuel injection pump is stripped. Starting. 1. Set the speed control level to high. 2. Raise the decompression lever and turn and starting handle vigorously 5 or 6. 50 to 60 times until the flywheel obtain momentum. 3. Release the decompression level and further turning and starting handle firmly. 4. Warm up the engine at 600 to 700 revolutions per minute speed without load force at least 10 minutes during operation. 1. Check if cool water is coming out of the water pipe outlet. 2. Check the lube oil pressure warning indicator, oil signal, to see the oil signal is blue. Stopping 1. Set the speed control level to stop position. 2. Close the fuel cock. 3. Close the Kingston cock during operation 1. Check if cool water is coming out of the cooling water pipe outlet. 2. Check the lube oil pressure warning indicator, oil signal, to see the oil signal is blue. Stopping 1. Set the speed control level to stop position. 2. Close the fuel cock. 3. Close the Kingston cock. Stopping. 1. Set the speed control level to stop position. 2. Close the fuel cock. 3. Close the Kingston cock. 4. Stop the engine at the compression stroke by turning it with the starting handle until resistance is felt. Do not use the decompression lever. At this position, the intake and exhaust valves are closed, protecting the cylinder and valve seats from moisture, both crew. Duties and Responsibilities, Boat Coxswains, 1. Above and foremost, he must be a qualified coxswain. 2. He must be completely familiar with his boat's physical characteristics. 3. He must see to it that his boat is always clean and ready for any moment use. 4. He must know his passenger's capacity and the equivalent of 1, 1, person to a cargo 165 pounds 5. He has full charge of his boat crew and passengers. 6. When underway during inclement weather, he shall require all his boat crew and passengers to wear life jackets. 7. He shall reinforce the no smoking regulation and require all passengers to sit down properly while underway. 8. Safety and welfare of the personnel must be his primary concern. Boat engineer, 1. Responsible for the upkeep maintenance and depuration of the engine. 2. He should be able to make mineral repairs and spot trouble before it has a chance to cause damage. Bowman 1. Acts as bow lookouts and handles their bow leans and forward fender when coming alongside or getting underway. 2. Responsible for the cleanliness of the boat. 3. He should be qualified to relieve the cop sniff necessary. Chapter 8. Life Rafts. Life Rafts are floats made of wood, metal, rubber or plastic enclosing hermetically sealed air spaced. Generally, life rafts are supplements to lifeboats carried by ocean-going passenger and cargo vessels, and are either used or employed as primary or secondary means of evacuation, depending upon the type and size of a ship. They are easy to stow and in most conditions, they can be launched by one or two persons. The marine inflatable life raft is a widely used piece of life-saving equipment.
it should be stowed in a manner that permits it to float free from the structure, inflate and break free from the structure in the event of a sinking. The marine life raft is a strong and durable piece of life-saving equipment that is designed to stand up to severe weather conditions and rough seas. It is important that you understand a few things about the raft to ensure your survival and rescue. Characteristics 1. Number of occupants permitted to carry is marked on container. The largest approved size is a 25-man capacity weighing no more than 400 pounds. 2. Support occupants out of water. 3. Survival equipment is contained within the raft. 4. Waterproof container. 5. Protection from the environment. The raft is packed in a fiberglass container for protection. A line called the painter line is attached to the inflation bottle. Every launching situation is different. IMO requirements for inflatable life rafts on ship built. After 1st of July 1986. 1. Inflatable life rafts shall comply with the requirements for all life rafts and, in addition, shall comply with the following. Construction of inflatable life rafts. A. The main buoyancy chamber shall be divided into not less than two separate compartments, each inflated through an on-return inflation valve on each compartment. The buoyancy chambers shall be so arranged that in the event of any one of the compartments being damaged or failing to inflate, the intact compartments shall be able to support, with positive freeboard over the life raft's entire periphery, the number of persons which the life raft is permitted to accommodate, each having a mass of 75 kilograms, 165 pounds, and seated in their normal positions. B. The floor of the life raft shall be waterproof and shall be capable of being sufficiently insulated against cold either. 1. By means of one or more compartments that the occupants can inflate, or which inflate automatically and can be deflated and reinflated by the occupants, or 2. By other equally efficient means not dependent on inflation. C. The life raft shall be inflated with a non-toxic gas. Inflation shall be completed within a period of one minute at an ambient temperature of between 18 to 20 degrees Celsius, 64 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. After inflation the life raft shall maintain its form when loaded with its full complement of persons and equipment. D. Each inflatable compartment shall be capable withstanding a pressure equal to at least three times the working pressure and shall be prevented from reaching a pressure exceeding twice the working pressure either by means of relief valves or by a limited gas supply. Means shall be provided for fitting the topping up air pump or bellows so that the working pressure can be maintained, carrying capacity of inflatable life rafts. The number of persons which a life raft shall be permitted to accommodate shall be equal to the lesser of a. The greatest whole number obtained by dividing 0.096 the volume measured in M3 of the main buoyancy tubes, which for this purpose she include neither the arches nor the thwarts if fitted, when inflated, or b. The greatest whole number obtained by dividing 0.372 the inner horizon cross-sectional area of the life raft measures an M2, which for this purpose may include the thwart or thwarts, if fitted, measured to the innermost edge of the buoyancy tubes, or c. The number of persons having an average mass of 75 kilograms, 165 pounds, a wearing life jackets, then can be seated with sufficient comfort and head bar without interfering with the operation of any of the life rafts equipment. Access into inflatable life rafts. D. At least one entrance shall be fitted with a semi-rigid boarding ramp to enable persons to board the life raft from the sea so arranged as to prevent significant deflation of the life raft if the ramp is damaged. In the case of a davit launch and life raft having more than one entrance opposite the bowsing lines and embarkation facilities. B. Entrances not provided with a boarding ramp shall have a boarding ladder the lowest rung of which shall be situated not less than 0.4 meters, 16 inches, below the life raft slight water line. C. There shall be means inside the life raft to assist persons to pull themselves into the life raft from the ladder stability of inflatable life rafts. A. 
every inflatable life raft shall be so constructed that when fully inflated and floating with the canopy uppermost, it is stable in a seaway. b. The stability of the life raft when loaded with its full complement of person and equipment shall be such that it can be towed at speed of up to 3 knots at calm water.